Today, we're having a look at a very exciting laptop. Now, this laptop was Asus's attempt to create the most appealing gaming laptop possible to children and oil barons. And what better way to captivate that demographic than involving Lamborghini? I have always wanted to check out one of these Lamborghini gaming laptops. I remember reading gaming magazines as a child, seeing them and thinking, that's a bit stupid, but pretty cool. So <laughs> let's have a look at the pretty cool, but probably quite stupid laptop. It's quite heavy. Oof. It's not in very good condition. To be honest, you can see that there are some deep scratches all over the laptop. Now this is obviously the black version, but you could get it in Arancio Livria, which is Lamborghini's orange, which I actually would have preferred because it, it leans into the loud, obnoxious Lamborghini-ness a lot better than the black does. Now this Asus VX7 first went up for sale in 2011, and the laptop seems to share taillights with the Murcielago, which was Lamborghini's flagship car of the time, a 6.2 liter V12 testament to their madness. Now some of you may have been thinking, oh I could tell that from the moment I first saw the laptop. And all I have to say to you is good luck wooing a member of the opposite sex. Now funnily enough, despite the fact that this laptop is only slightly smaller and lighter than an actual Lamborghini, it still only has a 15.6 inch display in it. Uh, it also has one of the highest quality piano black paint finishes I've ever seen on anything. Despite its heavy wear, it still looks deep and luxurious. Now when you open it up... Oh come on, look at the inside of this thing, that is disgusting. Someone ate an entire meal off the keyboard and then they didn't even clean it. What the hell? It does have leather on the touchpad, is that real leather? It feels like it, with a full keyboard that's also been scratched up and, and really very dirty. Now, the, the trackpad does date this laptop quite, quite effectively because it is tiny and glass plastic, so that is not a very nice looking trackpad. It's so disgusting! Now, as you can see on the side, the plastic cover over the, the DVD drive is actually missing. Uh, but aside from that, we do have two USB ports. And then on the other side, we've got a headphone jack, a microphone jack, a very, very broken looking USB port, HDMI. We've got a VGA port on a laptop, which I've not seen in ages, and then an Ethernet port with a power cable. Now, before we open up this poor neglected little laptop to see what the inside of a Lamborghini gaming laptop looks like, uh, let's just give it a little bit of a clean because it is... Uh, pretty disgusting at the moment. See what's going on under there, that just kind of lifts off. Ooh, this laptop undercarriage cover was clearly just savaged off by the previous owner. I don't know if that was before or after they had their keyboard meal. Now there isn't a whole lot that we have access to under here aside from the RAM, the Wi-Fi module and space for two 2.5 inch SSDs or hard drives. This is actually an SSD. It's a P871 and we also have access to the battery which is a 5200 milliamp hour battery and considering the hardware in here uh, it's probably not going to give us much battery life. Now at this point it does seem like further teardown may lead to David laptop smash so let's jump to after the testing to see what's under the hood. Now I've done my very interesting performance tests on it, uh, so I guess now it's time to see if we can get deeper inside this laptop. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna unscrew everything I find and, and see how much that helps us. Oh, 
Okay, so that's made the whole this bit come off. Now at this point, it quickly became clear why the previous owner had removed the laptop undercarriage panel in such a brutal fashion. Because to get access to the screws that hold that panel in place, you need to pry out both the keyboard and the trackpad assembly, which in itself feels like quite a destructive thing to do. Now, in order to go deeper, you need to remove the display, undo a bunch of ribbon cables, and just a whole bunch of screws littered about the place before you can remove this top bit of plastic that reveals the back of the laptop's motherboard. Hey, there we go. That wasn't a just frankly unnecessary amount of effort, but there we go. Oh, hold up, because you're not out the woods yet. The laptop's motherboard may only be held in by a couple of screws, but there is a frankly nightmare-inducing amount of ribbon cables you need to deal with, which makes reassembly especially difficult. But the real fun part of this process is the cable that connects the display to the VGA port, which is soldered down on both ends and leads through a hole underneath the motherboard. So it means you kind of have to juggle the display on the side of the laptop while trying to flip the very precariously shaped motherboard around to reveal a fascinating layout. This is the money shot we've been looking for. Ooh, okay, now this is the CPU which is actually socketed. That's very interesting. It's a socketed CPU. It's not soldered straight to the board. And then here we've got the GPU, which is also socketed. Uh, this is very unlike what the inside of modern laptops look like. They usually just have everything soldered onto the main board. It's all one piece. Now here is the underside of the GPU cooler, which uses, as you can see, like a, like a thermal putty to interface with the memory modules, which is not ideal. That is going to make it difficult for me to, to replace it. Now in terms of the GPU, you can see that it's actually a, a whole discrete PCB uh, with all of the memory modules. This is one and a half gigs, uh, the power delivery, and then we've got the GTX 560M in there. And then on the back, we've got... Uh, the actual mounting bracket with some more memory modules and cooling on the back. Ew, look at the heatsink, that's disgusting. Finally, we're gonna just take the CPU out of the socket to have a look. And this is the i7-2670QM, I think it is. Very dry thermal paste application, and there's the back of the CPU, look at that. It is a relatively modern Intel CPU with a PGA configuration, that's awesome. Now I bought this laptop from what's probably the worst eBay seller I've ever interacted with because they shipped it without the power brick for some reason, so I, I had to buy a new one. Luckily, there are still sellers on Best Buy's website that sell power bricks for these old gaming laptops, so that's awesome. <laughs> That is a huge, huge power brick, damn. So this is what a 150 watt laptop power brick looked like in 2011. Okay, let's see if this laptop equivalent of the gap between a car seat and the center console still actually runs. Hey, that's promising. It makes super low definition revving sounds when you power it up. That's amazing. Good, it's booted. I was, I was very worried there. Oh, we've got a nice little notice for, for PC information on here. Uh, we've got 16 gigs of RAM. We've got our i7 2670M with a 1080p display. Yeah, this is just a fresh install of Windows. I do think that originally when these laptops shipped with Windows 7 on them, uh, they did have a Lamborghini skin over the windows, uh, which made revving sounds in all kinds of various <laughs> situations. It's a shame that we don't have the Lamborghini skin on here. Now, this laptop definitely has some ergonomic quirks. First off, the power cable plugs in halfway down the right-hand side, which means you constantly bump your mouse on it, which is really irritating. Uh, the trackpad is also tiny and, and, and finicky to use. And finally, the keyboard has some of the worst flex I've ever seen in a 
keyboard. I mean, look at that. Oh, and another complete outrage. The tail lights don't light up when the laptop's running. What the hell is the point of having a Lamborghini themed laptop if you're not gonna make the tail lights light up? That is just zero out of 10. And with that, I guess we have to see how the damn thing runs. Now we're gonna start off with what is arguably one of the better games that was published in 2011, uh, Skyrim. And we're currently running at 1080p with medium settings. Yeah, it's pretty good, um, mid 40s in terms of frame rate. Now the game looks very solid, you know, we've got a whole bunch of grass around and some fog effect and it, it's not an amazing gaming experience, but it is an old gaming laptop. Oh, oh, okay, I may have spoken too soon. We had a big dip there. As you can see, the, the graphics card is, is quickly getting out of hand. I mean, I think one of the big issues with the performance of this laptop is the fact that they put a 1080p display on a laptop in this era with like a mid-tier mobile GPU. 1080p was difficult in 2011, even for beefier desktop GPUs. Now in terms of temperatures, it seems to have topped out about 95, 96 degrees Celsius, which is very hot, but you know, it is a gaming laptop. They do have, have different expectations in terms of temps. Now I've moved over to something a bit more demanding. Um, I did try and run Cyberpunk, but that was obviously a terrible idea because <laughs> that didn't work. Uh, so yeah, now we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider running at 720p low settings. It really doesn't like Lara's clothing for some reason. Um, it's artifacting really heavily on it and it's struggling to maintain 10 frames per second. So yes, this is definitely not playable, especially considering that it's running at 720p. Oh, that's not great. Um, we're busy running CSGO at 1080p low settings and yeah, it's not having a great time. What? Neither the GPU or the CPU are doing much. I mean, we're back at 100% GPU utilization and then something terrible happens and it starts slowing down. I mean, what is... It's not hitting the video memory limit. It's also not hitting a RAM limit. That is a surprisingly poor showing, actually. Um, but yeah, with that, I think the last game that we need to test is Crisis. Oh, okay. Um, this is 1080p medium, and it's it's not going great. There's a chicken over there, but I, I don't think I want to be... Ah! <laughs> oh, it's so hard to aim here. Um, okay, yes, so Crisis is, is not running very well. Let's try low, briefly. Oh, that's way better. Oh. They're all so small on this display. Yeah, okay, I guess, you know, if you have very low standards, then Crisis is, is, is playable on a Lamborghini laptop. Oh, oh, there is people shooting at me now. Unfortunately, the performance does not hold up very well these days, but it is a surprisingly Lamborghini-esque device. It is massively impractical, tacky, ludicrously expensive, and any respectable person would roll their eyes at it so hard, it would cause a permanent astigmatism. And that's why I kinda love it, I think they nailed it. It's just a shame that this specific one seems to have been owned by a family of rabid raccoons. Uh, but yeah, that brings me to the end of the video. If you like the video and you want to support the channel, check out our awesome merch linked in the description below. Sub to the channel and all that good stuff. And until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.